Shalom, Havarim. Last time, we looked at all the consonants of the Hebrew language. Now it's time to add the vowels. It's important to note that the various points that represent the vowels in the Hebrew Bible, with only a few exceptions that we'll discuss, do not appear in the original manuscripts, such as we see in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The points were added by a group of meticulous scholars called the Masoretes to preserve the proper pronunciation and cantillation of the text in the synagogue. While most learners of Biblical Hebrew won't be chanting the text in worship, it is still worth learning the vowel pointing system for study and exegesis of the Hebrew text. Our text to look at the vowels is Exodus 1, 1 through 5, as it contains every vowel. The vowels can be divided into categories, historical long or unchangeable, long and short. Each will be dealt with in turn. The historical long or unchangeable vowels are those that are not just a vowel mark, but are consonants as well. These are the exception mentioned just a moment ago. They are part of the consonantal text, yet they are consonants acting as vowels. They are often called vowel carriers. Our first vowel carrier is comet's hay, made by a, the combination of a comet's vowel mark, which looks like a subscript T, followed by the consonant hay. The comet's hay makes an ah sound. The hay as vowel carrier can also take other preceding vowels as seen in the first word of this verse. Here, it is a segel hay, producing an eh sound. The vowel carrying hay will always be the final part of a word. It does not appear at the beginning or in the middle of the word. This final hay in green, however, is different. It is still a vowel carrying hay, but it is also a part of speech that signifies location hence its name as locative hay. It will be discussed in a future lesson. Our second vowel carrier is tsere yod, formed by the combination of a tsere vowel, which looks like two subscript dots next to each other, followed by the consonant yod. The tsere yod makes an A sound. The third vowel carrier is the hirek yod, produced by the combination of a hirek vowel, which looks like a singular subscripted dot, followed by the consonant yod. The hirik yod makes an e sound. Vav holam is the fourth vowel carrier, formed by the consonant vav with a holam vowel, a superscript dot above it. Unlike the previous vowel carriers, the consonant does not contribute to the sound. The vav holam is pronounced as an o sound. Our last vowel carrier is the shurek. It is formed by a vav consonant with a dot next to its middle left side. Like vav holam, the consonant does not contribute to the sound. The shurek is pronounced with an oo sound. It is the only vowel that can start a word, in which case it is the conjunction, meaning and. The long vowels make the same sounds as the historical long or unchangeable vowels. The difference is that they are not necessarily attached to a vowel carrying consonant. Comets is that subscript T that makes an ah sound. Notice though, that there is a comets in the last line that is circled. While it looks like a comets, it is actually another vowel entirely. It will be discussed later. Tsere is a subscript side-by-side -side pair of dots. It produces an A sound. Holum is a superscript dot, normally slightly to the left side of the consonant it is pronounced with it makes an O sound. You may note other dots over letters as well, particularly shin and sin. These aren't holums, but rather the dot that distinguishes between the sh and s sound that this consonant can make. If a shin has a holum, it will have dots on both the right and left prong. If a sin has a holum, there will be only the one left hand dot. This thankfully is a rare occurrence. Let's look at our last category of vowels, short. Patach, which looks like a small underscore, makes an ah sound like comets. You may notice that there are two instances in these verses of a patach to the left of what looks like a subscript colon. This is called a hatef vowel, a specific sort of short vowel produced when certain consonants called gutturals are forced to shorten their main vowel sounds. This will be discussed in the lesson on schwa. Segel, which looks like a small cluster of grapes, makes an eh sound. Hirek, 
which looks like a single subscript dot makes an i sound as in sit. This is in distinction to the Hirak Yod, which sounds like the e as in machine. Kamet's hatuf might be the hardest vowel to identify in the Hebrew system. It looks like a Kamet's. However, it is actually an O sound, like holam. It only appears in certain syllables, which will be discussed in a future lesson. Kibitz is a fairly rare vowel that looks like three subscripted dots that are lower on the right side. They make an oo sound. This chart shows all the vowels by length and by class. Comets hey, comets, and patak are part of the A class vowels. Tsere yod, hirek yod, tsere, segel, and hirek are part of the I slash E class. Bob holam, shurek, holam, comets hatuf, and kibitz are in the O slash U class. Notice that there are variant ways of spelling the vowels in English. Here's our passage again. Now that we know the sounds of the consonants and vowels, we can begin to read Hebrew. We will want to discuss shvaz, the subscript colons, to round out the pronunciation of Hebrew. But for now, let's read the text. Be'ele shemot b'nei Yisrael habayim mitzrayma. Eit Yaakov ish uveto ba'u. Ruven, Shimon, Levi, Vihuda, Issachar, Zivulun, Uv, Nayamin, Dan, Benaftali, God, the Asher. Vaihi Kol Nefesh, Yotse, Yerech Yaakov, Shivim, Nafesh, the Yosef Haya, Bimitzrayim. And these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt. With Jacob, each one in his household came, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the lives going out from the loins of Jacob were 70 lives, and Joseph was in Egypt. We are well on our way to being able to fully read the Hebrew Bible.